Okay, rolling. This video, the one that, uh, that I'm making right now, is a long time coming. Two years, in fact. It's a, it's a follow-up. This video is actually part two of, I guess, my journey as a, as a pro player, bringing you through my career, hoping to share some insights, insights with you. Okay, before we get into how or who this video is for, if you haven't watched part one, um, watch it now. I will link it up there or uh, down in the description. Okay, watch that. Get a feel for, for the journey. Get a feel for who I am. If you're new here, my name is Jordan Owens. I'm a former professional hockey player, 12 years professionally, six in North America, in the American Hockey League, the little, little stints here and there in the East Coast Hockey League, which we'll talk about a bit today, and six years in Europe. Okay, I played in Denmark, Italy, Germany, and England, and a little victory lap after I retired in Australia, which was interesting. More on that in another video. Okay, so who is this video for? This video is for young players aspiring to be professional hockey players, okay? This is for hockey players who are playing at a competitive level right now, okay, who aspire to reach their potential as a player and not, not sell themselves short. This video is for parents of hockey players or athletes in general, but it's mainly hockey players. Okay, this parent, listen carefully parents. This is especially for you because it's tough to parent a hockey player, especially one that's playing at a level that you yourself have never played at. Okay, they've reached a level of maybe even success in life that you that you that you haven't. Okay, it's it's hard to parent from below, right? You're not gonna have any relatable experiences that you can share down. So a lot of times, what happens is parents just say the dumbest things that are not helpful or supportive at all, and it, it's actually detrimental. Okay, might get into that a little bit, but. This is also a video for people who just want to be, who like inspirational content, okay? Because I like to share my victories. I've had a lot of victories, but I really like to share the failures as well because I feel like that's where others are going to learn. Okay, don't make the mistakes that I've made and I'm going to share some of them in this video. Okay, so if you're one of those people, it's going to be fun follow along on this. Um, and yeah, if you're just here for entertainment purposes, you want to know a little bit of uh, behind the scenes, what it's like to be a professional athlete. Okay. Stay long. Let's go. Okay. So as I mentioned, this, this is a part two. All right. So by now, if you watch the, the first version, I think I left off. Um, uh, I've talked about my, my first NHL training camp. Okay, so after that training camp, I was sent to Hartford. Okay, Hartford's the American Hockey League team for the New York Rangers. It's the American Hockey League. It's a very, very good league. It's very competitive throughout the league, but also very competitive throughout the team. Okay, I've talked to people about this. The American Hockey League is so, so tricky because hockey's a team game, all right? It's a team game, but at the American Hockey League, you're so close to your life goal, okay? The mission that you set out on the, since a kid, right? The thing you dreamed of, you're so close, you can taste it. And there's a lot of money at stake too, you know? You go from making very just regular person money to like hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're a phone call away from hundreds of thousands of dollars basically okay so there's a lot there's a lot of pressure there's a lot on the table everyone knows this okay so everyone in the room your teammates your comrades your brothers your friends everyone knows this right so what what happens when the guy next to you starts doing better than you okay so if 
if anyone goes down up top, you know, with an injury or something, they're going to call this team and they're, they're going to be looking for a player to replace him. They're going to call someone up, okay? The person next to you is doing better than you. It's going to be them and it's not going to be you. So, as I mentioned, it's, it's so tricky because it's a team sport and you're like, let's go, rah, rah, team. But at the same time, if someone's doing a lot better than you, you're kind of like, oh, crap. Like, am I really that happy that this guy's outplaying me? Okay? It's tough. It's tough. It's... The, the real characters really show through because it's very obvious when you have players in the team who are solely out for their their self I'm not shaming these players because but trust I get it I just explained there's a lot on the table but at the same time like you got to be a good you got to just be a good teammate because you don't want to become a, you know a cancer on your team that player who's just so very obviously selfish there's players like this on every team, okay, at every level once it starts getting competitive, okay, right from junior hockey on up. So I'm in the American Hockey League, right? I have a great training camp. I'm a fourth line sort of energy player. I'm a, I guess you could call me a, a player who's on the bubble, okay? It's not actually that clear that I'm going to play on this team. You know, it's the start of the season. I got through training camp, so like I'm on the team for now. But I'm on the bubble and I'm watching my friends and brothers left and right just get snipped. I'm with them one day and they're gone the next. And I'm sad to see him go, but I'm really happy that it wasn't me. Okay, so at this point, I'm not living in a uh, apartment or anything like that. So I'm living in a hotel. Um, one interesting and challenging thing for bubble players at the start of each year, this happens in the American Hockey League, is the person who's sort of, you know, it's like the team ops, like the team manager basically goes around um, and he hands out letters. And these letters basically tell you, okay, you've, you've, you're on the team, go find an apartment in town. Okay, so after practice, you know, you're, you're sitting around the room and everyone's there and there's someone handing out letters. You get one, you get one, you get one, gets to me. Pass me, you get one, you get one, so I don't get a letter. Okay, so right right off the bat, it's like a blow to your confidence, right? It's a blow to your confidence. It doesn't feel good. You're, you're just reminded again of how, how close you are to not being there the next day. And that went on for the, the whole year. The whole year was like that. I never got a letter that year. I spent the entire year living out of a hotel um, just outside of Hartford. The hotel was actually right beside a TGI Fridays. And on the other side of that was an apartment complex. And that's where basically the entire team lived. And uh, I lived in a, um, it was a courtyard, not a courtyard Marriott, residence inn. I think that's what it was called, a residence inn, which is like a, um, it's like an apartment. It has a little stove top and fridge and there's a living space, a couch and stuff and a separate bedroom. So it's pretty cool. You know, at this point, I'm still young. I'm like, what was I then, 21 years old. Um, first time really living away. I lived away from home like my whole junior career, but this is like a whole new level. When you're in junior, you have billets, which are basically like um, host families. They're like your second parents who, who sort of keep you in line, basically. They cook for you, they clean up everything. They're basically your parents. Um, but now I'm in a hotel and I have my first taste of like uh, being a real adult, completely free, free as a bird, living in a different country, hundreds of kilometers away from where I grew up. Okay, I'm getting per diem, which is basically meal money. So when you live in a hotel, um, part of the collective bargaining agreement and through the, the Players Association, there's, you know, rules in place for like uh, employee welfare, basically, even in, in professional sports, if you're lucky. Basically, I'm getting getting a few bucks every day for food and stuff, which is cool. I eat at TGI Fridays for lunch and dinner almost every day. If I don't eat there, I'm, I'm basically eating at uh, Quiznos or something like that. And then TGI Fridays for dinner. So basically, I ate at TGI Fridays for an entire hockey season. The worst food ever. The worst stuff I could be eating. But like, so young and just so, so dumb when it comes to that stuff. And, you know, just didn't really know any better. But... It, uh, I got off 
to a bit of a rocky start to that season. So my routine every morning when I got to the rink was walk into the room and go see if my gear is there. Because how it usually happens when you get cut, show up to the rink and your bag, your hockey bag is there packed with your sticks on top. And you're just like, oh, oh, okay, I guess I'm not here anymore. So every day I would go in and make sure my gear is hanging up. Ah, okay, it's still here. Then I will go change with the rest of the guys. Get into my, my gitch. <laughs> So that, that wasn't fun, but it was a, it was a good, it was a good for my mental strength and my attitude, my resilience and my fighting spirit. Every single day I was fighting for my job, every practice, okay? Practices for me were, were games. Practices for me were games. It's preparing for practice like a game, you know, doing cold tubs, everything like that. Been doing cold tubs before it was trendy, okay? This is like 2000 eight eight i think so a few games into the season i just go like this downhill i had a great training camp and just started to crash and burn and it was because i was feeling awful my body my body was feeling terrible i'm an energy player i rely on um you know speed grit work ethic like rah 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 and and, you know for checking hitting people stirring it up every whistle i'm like giving someone a face wash, right? Just trying to like stir stir something up, okay? Bring some type of value to, to the team. It's important. So after a, a few healthy scratches, the coach, uh, after practice, he comes to me one day, sitting down, and everyone's gone at this point, and I wasn't trying to be a hero, you know, and, and stick around the rink and be like, look at how hard I'm working. It wasn't, it wasn't that. I was hanging around because I just didn't want to go back to the hotel, you know, just hang around the ring, tape sticks after everyone's gone. And the coach comes in and uh, this is Ken Janander. Okay. He had the coaching position. That was his first year. And he coached for like another 10 years, Hartford. And he was basically like the mayor of Hartford. He played for the team as a captain for like 10 years before that. And he was the one who, when I was in Hartford, if you followed part one of my video, you know that I spent like 10 games in Hartford um, at the last season the very end of the season i went from mississauga played 10 games in, in hartford at the very end of the season it's a normal thing watch part one you'll understand he came to me um you know season four he said hey you're in the lineup tonight and he's like you know what don't don't be nervous do what got you here i said that in the first video too but it was chris jury who told me that this is a very common piece of advice in in the hockey world just do what got you here right real simple I'll always remember that because it was like, wow, I'm in. I'm going to play my first professional hockey game. This is sick. You know, you're so, so fired up. So anyways, same guy, Ken Janander, we're sitting sitting next to each other. And um, he, he always liked me because I played like him from what I've been told. Okay, I played, you know, that high energy gritty style. So I think I, I felt that he liked me, okay, which is very key. You need your coach to like you. So he's, he's talking to me. He's like, Hey, what's going on? Like, you're just, you're not yourself. You're not that player from like two weeks ago or three weeks ago in, in camp. He's like, what's going on? And I was just, so I was very honest with him. I'm like, man, you know what? I didn't say, man, I'm like, I feel like I don't have any energy. I don't have any energy. I, I don't know what's going on. Like I go to the hotel and I kind of just lay in bed or sit on the couch and watch TV all day. I'm like, I just feel like crap. And he's like, okay, so what are you eating? He's like, <laughs> I remember exactly. He's like, you're picking like sweet potato over regular potato, right? Because it's better. And sports science and nutrition has come like light years since since that. So it's so funny, but I mean, it's not even to this day. I think, you know, sweet potato is pretty good. Anyways, he, uh, he, <laughs> he gave me some advice, you know, let's just change up your diet and everything. And uh, I'm going to pause here. The reason was because I was dehydrated. I didn't figure this out until I was done in North America. Six seasons later, I figured out the reason why I would feel like crap on days I felt like crap is because I was dehydrated. Isn't that insane? Now, since then, crushing water. Crushing water all the time, feel like a million bucks. Recovery is so good. You always feel great. It's amazing. So you don't have to be a pro athlete to be hydrated. Okay, speaking of that, Okay, so I, I was dehydrated. I didn't know. Was, you know, I was eating on Fridays too, so like, what, what could I expect? But 
you know, it, it was just a bad situation. So I don't know if it was that day or the next day I went to the, the guy who handed out the letters, you know, the manager. He was actually the assistant coach, Pat Bowler. I think he's moved up in the organization quite a bit since then. You know, I, I have a conversation with him. I'm like, you know, Patty, um, so I actually made a mistake. At this point, I'm still in the Hilton. I'm still in a traditional hotel. Okay, there's just two beds, TV, bathroom. That's where I am up to this point. I tell him that I I heard there's this hotel that's that's better. It's like a an apartment, blah blah blah. He he knows it, you know. Um, so he he offers to move me over there. I'm like, this is great. This is great. I'm gonna be able to cook by myself. Okay, sorry for totally butchering that that last part. I hope you guys are still following along because this is key. So he moves me over there and uh, I pack up my stuff in my my Intrepid. You guys remember that from part one as well. I'm leaving the, the Hilton. I'm just about to pull up, pull up. I'm just about to get in my car to drive out to uh, to this new hotel. And uh, Ken Janander, the coach, he calls me and he's like, Hey, oh, what's going on? I'm like, oh, nothing. I'm just I'm pumped. I'm ready to go to the residence inn. And he's like, well, um, actually, you're going to drive to to Charlotte. You're going down. <laughs> I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? My heart just sank. My world, my world ended. My world ended. It felt like that. I was just crushed. He's like, yep, yeah, um, they're expecting you down there. You know, what guys usually do is they drive halfway around Washington, D.C. And then, um, you know, do it in two days, basically, because it's a 12 hour drive. And I'm like, wow, wow. I go back in the hotel and I go to the bathroom and everything is just spinning. Right. I'm completely alone in this place. Com parents are families miles and miles and miles away you know i'm by myself i go into the bathroom in the lobby and i go into one of the stalls and i sit down and honestly i just started crying i just started sobbing to myself and i didn't know what to do i was embarrassed i was heartbroken because i was going the wrong direction right but the energy was, my emotions were just going, adrenaline was going, I hopped in the car and I just started driving. I started driving down to, to Charlotte, okay? Charlotte is the, uh, where were we called? Let me just check, what were we called? The Charlotte Checkers. Okay, Charlotte, by the way, um, it's North Carolina, it's an awesome place. Great, great city. And a couple years later, they ended up getting an uh, American Hockey League team friend of mine played there, Shiggy. Anyways, I, I started out on this journey, right? And um, this is before, um, you know, phone, GPS, all this stuff, okay? So I drive 12 hours through the States just following the highway signs. <laughs> just following the highway signs, okay? Like, no idea where I'm going south, that's me. I'm just going south, okay? I'll start to see Charlotte when when I'm south enough. You know, I'll know I'm there. Didn't stop. I drove 12 hours straight. The coach called me uh, late that night in the evening. He's like, hey, hey uh, I'm the coach. Um, what's going on? Where are you? I'm like, I don't know where I am. I'm just driving. I'll be there in the morning. He's like, oh, well, usually guys stop halfway. I'm like, I'll be there in the morning. And it was, he was like, okay, we'll see you at practice. And I uh, drove through the night. I stopped at a Red Lobster, God knows where. God knows where I stopped at this Red Lobster, but it was just the saddest, depressing moment. I'm sitting at the bar eating like this crap food, drowning in my depression, <laughs> basically. You know, you look over at the bar and there's some other miserable guy like, <sighs> so that was basically me. Um, I get to Charlotte, it's like, it's probably like 5.30. Might be mixing up the times here, but it's, it's really early. It's too early to go to the rink, I have nowhere else to go. So I actually check into a hotel and I sleep for a few hours because practice is not till, you know, 11 or something. So I, you know, you feel a little better. You wake up there in this new place 
and uh, I go to the rink and meet the team and everything. And it's a step down, right? Like it's it's definitely a step down. The rink is not as good. The locker room's not as good. The, everything gets worse the further you go down, right? Even me, that's why I'm down there. I have no shame in saying that, okay? This story ends happily. So, you know, I meet my teammates, go for practice. Everything is, is good, but my attitude is like, shit, my attitude sucks. It sucks. I have this attitude of, I shouldn't be here. I'm not an East Coast player. I'm an American Hockey League player. Like, what am I doing here? No one knows what they're talking about. This is, you know, just playing a victim, right? It's a victim story in my head. So I'm not really playing my game, right? My game is hard work. It is hard work. Every shift becomes like my my trademark, right? My my identity as a player. My teammates, that's how they know me. Hey, this guy shows up every game and goes all the time hard. Take a lot of pride in that. Take a lot of pride in that, man. Going hard. Being known as the person who works their ass off, that's who you want to be known for, okay? In anything you do, anything you do, this guy brings it, okay? So I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that at all. And it shows in my game, you know, I'm not doing very well. I'm at a, a level where I should be doing well, okay? If not like dominating this. Started my career young, just came out out of junior, put up some good numbers, you know? Good, good hockey player, not living up to my full potential because of my attitude. So it took a few weeks to come to, to the realization Remember like one night I was sitting in the, in the hot tub with my buddy, um, Matt Zabu had come out, a really good friend of mine. And I'd actually end up rooming with him the next season. We're just sitting there, you know, like we need to get out of here. We need to get out of here. And it just, a, a light switch went off in my head. So I'm out of here, man, I'm done. I go to the rink the next day and just start working my ass off practices in the games i'm like flying i'm diving for pucks i'm like stirring things up and just doing everything right now i start producing start scoring some goals start setting players up my confidence is starting to go boop, 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 boop. feeling good feeling great um i was there how many games did i play um 20 games 20 games quite a bit you know it's a couple months month and a half or something like that. But I get the, I get the phone call, you know, it was like 10.30 or something at night. Um, like, yeah, you're, you're going up. You're going back to Hartford. Yes, just just what I wanted. You know, I pack, pack a backpack, got my hockey gear from the rink and I was gone back up to Hartford, okay? Now I arrive in, in the good hotel, the residence and it's like an apartment, everything is good. The Fridays is there, the rest of the team is, is right over, right next to that, okay? Now we're in the residence inn, okay? Um, eating like crap, eating at Fridays. When I was in, excuse me, when I was in Charlotte, I was cooking because I had I was in a regular apartment, had a roommate. Yeah, had a roommate. You know, we're cooking. Everything, everything is good. Okay, I'm getting used to being on my own, like doing my own laundry and, and cooking for myself every single night. All these these kinds of things, right? So. I'm still in, it's fun just these memories to come back. It's just like, it's so fun. Showing up to the rink every day. Thinking you're gonna get cut again. Just in survival mode. Fighting, 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 fighting. And um, if anyone sent out from the Rangers, I'm the first one out of the lineup. Okay, if you watch part one, you understand that. Bottom of the totem pole, don't have an NHL contract, right? 
So I had a fighting spirit. I carry that with me today. Developed a, a chip on my shoulder. It's the underdog. And uh, the season goes on, season passes, right? I get in a, a bunch of games. I do pretty good, you know, do pretty good. Good enough that they picked up the option on my contract. And uh, I go home that summer and start training. Okay, I'm cutting it there. Okay, so I'm gonna break this up into another part, at least one other part. All right, so if you made it to this point in the video, thank you so much. I hope you're finding some value or getting some entertainment at the very least. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already. Like the video, hit the notification bell because you definitely don't want to miss the, the coming parts, okay? As I progress through my career, that's when I start videotaping more, okay? I get a camera like the next, the next year, okay? So a lot more footage. Um, make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out when I post. All right, thank you so much. You went to this point in the video. I love you. One final thing, um, shout out to our patrons, okay? We get a shout out every video. Thank you guys so much for the support. If you yourself are interested in, uh, in becoming a patron, links in the bio. It's a simple way to support this channel, okay? And what we're doing, all right? Thank you so much. Hope you have a good day and peace.